Sell boxcars. Buying boxcars. That was my sure. dad's first jump was out of that. Is that right? And 65 for him, so he's a year after you. You were there in 64? Or no. Were you, oh, oh, Daddy was there in 65. Oh. When were you there? Uh, 94. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> starting to click and you couldn't be that old. Uh, yeah, the instructor said the hardest thing about jumping a C-119 is getting it up to 1,200 feet. <laughs> 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 so you talk about fear. I've never been so afraid in my life that first jump. Never. I gut wrenching, knee knocking fear. Oh, I wasn't scared even. the first one. It was the second one. I was that terrified. Right? That's that's <laughs> you know what you first. expect after that. Most guys, their 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 first jumps are, are the worst, and they, they get progressively easy. The the uh, the courage fades over time, just like combat. If you're out of combat, I was never in it, but I I read stories. And after you're out of it for a while, and you got to go back, and then you're real scared at first. Uh, yeah. So. You were one of the few people I've ever run across that got more scared as they went along rather than less scared. I'll tell you, I just didn't know what to expect that first time, so it was just a wild ride for the oh. first trip through the door. But after that, I, I got, I guess, used to it, but at the same time, it's something you always think about. Well, you visualize, everybody visualizes what a parachute drop or a parachute jump would be, and I did too before I made one. And what everyone fails to realize or visualize is the noise. Yeah. And, the and then the quiet. The, the lack of yeah, noise. but but it's just when the the noise and and the wind. Most people when they think of the parachute jumping, they think of just you know jumping out because you see it. It's not a sound picture. It doesn't have a hawk going, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't have that C-130 and drop speed of 125 knots, you know, and yeah. so you're 135 miles an hour by a class three hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is, and you, no one ever visualizes what that that hawk is like. It, it's, they open those jump doors, it pressurizes all, every piece of nylon goes waving like that. So what do you, you want to talk about what? Well, how old were you when you were uh, in the military? Just when turned you, 17. Just turned 17? Got my first adult arrest. I was uh, 17 in late November, and I got my first adult arrest. And uh, the judge no crossed it when I told him I was going in the Army. <laughs> That's what the Army was like back then. They're doing it to the Army now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they waived before Mr. Mina rules. They waived no felony rules. They're going right back to, they waived, uh, they may have waived even a high school diploma. They're going right back to where they were in the 60s, a bunch of kill crazy psychos, man. Cheap pain killers, man. That's what we all were. Oh, man, I'm telling you, my, my, I was in Bravo, a, a rifle company for a year before I went to Special Weapons, and, uh, uh, the, the great majority of the guys in there were not high school graduates. One enlisted man had some college he had two years of college. Really? And he was actually a U.S. that had volunteered airborne and then re-upped and became R.A. Yeah, so he was a draftee. <laughs> he was the one draftee in the company, and he was the one that had any college at all. <laughs> That's what it was like back then. It was like the French Foreign Legion, you know. Uh, you, you get out of going to court by saying you're going in the Army. You know, so, yeah, I'd gotten a vagrancy arrest, uh, childish done, uh, me and another guy was going in the back of Royal Castles, which is like Crystal, and right. this is in Florida, Miami, did, uh, Day County, Hylia, and Crystals are like Florida, and we, you knock and to use the bathroom, we were going in the back and stealing food uh, out of the back of it and then throwing it at cars, 17 years old, <laughs> like, acting like a child. You know, we, you know, a, a gross of eggs, you know, which is only about this big, a dozen, dozen eggs, is 144 eggs. <laughs> you can, you can do all kinds of stuff. Oh, uh, chop a custard pie, just, just walk out and you, I'm an, I'm a, I'm a sociopath, man. I'm a, like what they call an antisocial. That's that's the new name for it, an antisocial personality. In, in my day, it was called a sociopathic character disorder what it was known as. Really? Yeah, you just walk out in the middle of the street, stand on the yellow line, four lane, you know, like highly a drive, Boulevard. Some people come along, you're standing right there in the middle on the yellow line, the center line, and they're looking at you, and you're looking at them, <laughs> and they're thinking, he's not going to throw that thing in. <laughs> and you, oh, oh. And then run like hell. Oh, I mean, tons of fun, man. <laughs> Idle you. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gary, the, uh, like I said before, the reason we're here to talk to you, Meredith's been adjudicated. Hey, I'm, I'll help we, you out on that case we, because uh, you, we made a deal. Yeah, we, and, we, just, um, we just want to shore up a few things. Yeah, yeah I understood the FBI came to talk to you the other day. On this, Thursday. Yeah, this, 
we're, oh, yeah. we're not with them on, on anything. We're just basically going oh, no. to give background on Gary Hilton just finish up our case. Oh, yeah. The uh, one one thing that we got to get out of the way, due to the fact that you are in custody, mm -hmm. is our policy um, that we go ahead and make sure that you still understand what your rights are. Yeah, I understand. Which is, which is which is our policy. I know you understand what your rights are because you basically oh, yeah, quoted, well, you basically it, yeah. you basically quoted them to me anyway. Yeah. But um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to the lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. You cannot afford to hire a lawyer. Won't be appointed to represent you before any question if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Mm -hmm. Everything everything good with that? Yeah. Um, basically the uh, from 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 the military, I understand that you uh, you met your first wife yeah. in, the, in the military. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Ursula. Ursula. Um, do what now? Well, she, that's what they call Ursula in Germany. And you met her in Germany? Mm -hmm. She, uh, how long were you guys married? Uh, just, uh, married in, uh, married in 98 and divorced in 71. I've been going with her since 65. She was 16 when I met her. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the worst mistake I ever made with her running her off. Really? Gorgeous girl. I mean, truly gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the best body, uh, you know, none finer I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. She had a body so good, she'd be at the swimming pool, she'd be going to the ladies' room, and I, I've walked along behind her and seen a little boy just in trance walk behind her and follow her right into the ladies' room. I mean, she was stunning, stunning. Mm -hmm. And not only that, she was a good German housewife. Her father was a police Hauptmeister, the highest in the mm -hmm. rank, first sergeant, mm -hmm. like a chief, right? Hauptmeister. He was enlisted, though, not an officer. That would be uh, Hauptmann, that would, I guess, and, you know, mm -hmm. Hauptmeister. Highest enlisted rank, he was a police officer. She had an older sister that had already married uh, GINE 5, so that kind of smoothed away from me. Right. But at any rate, she was gorgeous. A fine girl brought up by a police officer, fine German house for Al, kept a spotless house, meals ready. Only wanted to do what I wanted to do. And not only that, she uh, had her training was as a draftsman. In Germany, they start them at about 15 into an apprenticeship program, where they go high school half the day mm -hmm. and learn a trade or a vocation the other half. Whether you're going to be a waitress or whatever you're going to be, it's called a learning, a learning, a learner, mm -hmm. an apprentice. Mm -hmm. So she, her apprenticeship was as a draftsman. There was there was no computer assisted drafting back then. Mm -hmm. None, no CID. That was when they, when they hand drew everything, didn't they? Everything. Hand drew, hand lettered, everything. Even all the symbols or whatever. Add, add the whole blue, imagine a blueprint or, yeah, a blueprint. Everything, every single thing hand drawn. Sure, it was drafting. It was mm -hmm. what a draftsman was. So it's a high paying trade and it was hard to learn, very demanding and difficult. And of course, right up a German's alley because it demanded <laughs> precision. It was meticulous. Yeah, yeah. That's what it demanded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just total meticulousness. And patients, uh, and, and Germans are, whatever. Anyway, the point is, she came over after I married her, I brought her over. She immediately proceeded to get a job, Leslie Romper Company, my mother worked there, so that was an end. Got a job with them in the trust company, drawing trusses. They made trusses to order for buildings, and everyone had to be drawn, that kind of thing. So you actually brought her back to Yeah, the yeah, I married her, and after I'd been going with her a couple of years, I married her shortly before I left for the state, so that would put her in line for a visa. So right. I married her, got her got her visa working. Back then, visas were damn hard to get. Probably still are for Germans. Right. Uh, and uh, got her working on her visa, and now she was my spouse, so, mm -hmm. you know, bam, she had. And then at that time, I left went back and stayed briefly with my parents, rented an apartment or actually it was a guest house on a property on the Biscayne River, 125 a month, <laughs> sort of catty cornered across from my mother and stepfather's house. And about two or three months later, I, then she came over. Okay. And then I worked another couple of months until December and uh, quit and entered uh, Miami Day Junior College uh, flying, growing uh, pilot, career pilot program. Uh, using my GI Bill. Back then, maybe they still will, pay 90% of your, after after private pilot, you have to get your private pilot license. Back then, a private pilot license cost 900 bucks. You can get a Cessna a C-150s uh, dry for 11 bucks an hour, dual with an instructor for 14 an hour. Well, that's crazy. Oh my God, I know, tell them what it Anyway, so, uh, 
they pay would pay ninety percent. VA would pay ninety percent of your flight costs. Sweet. Oh yeah, and the tuition was one hundred and fifty a semester because it was a, a community college. So you actually went through the training. And yeah, I got the degree uh, and I uh, got the uh, commercial ticket with a multi-engine and instrument rating, and I got a certificate of flight instructor instrument ticket. Also. Really? Instrument thing? Yeah. CF double I, uh, CF double I, certificate of flight instructor instrument fixed wing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying a lot of guys are instrument rated even nowadays. No, right? no. Well, the instrument rating then was an additional 40 hours, as much as it takes to get a, a, a right. private ticket. Yeah. Private ticket was 40 hours approved. I'm sorry. Did you say you got commercial too? Yeah. Rated as okay. Oh yeah, commercial with a multi and instrument, and then instrument instructor. Have you kept up with that, or? You... No, I've never flown since. Oh, okay. You just yeah. you just got it just. Got it. And what what got me off off of that is that I worked 15 hours a week as a student assistant at the college. It was a max allowed. It was in the audio visual department. Right. At that time, <clears throat> Miami Dade Junior College North Campus was the largest in the nation. Twenty seven thousand students on one camp, uh, out of that one campus. Maybe still is. Right. And as a result, the audio visual department wasn't just a bunch of old 16 millimeter projectors. We're talking about production studios, TV, movie, movie production studios, on staff artists on staff analysis we can make our own slide presentations and everything with our artists and announcers could narrate them uh we had a closed circuit tv system in uh, in uh, 67. Really? So, yeah using like the old uh, one one or two inch tape mm -hmm. yeah yeah and we had what we call a film chain where we could project movies into a tv camera and show them over closed circuit nobody had that there was no such thing as a VCR or, uh, or DTR then, videotape recorder, right. back then. Uh, they were, but it was commercial only. There was a big deck yeah, with, big, with big decks with either one or two inch tape. Uh, I forgot what it was. Yeah, very way cutting edge, totally cutting edge. And so it was a big operation. The distribution center, which did uh, every kind of presentation, in class, pre you know, handled every kind of in class presentation from slides to putting a TV set in for closed circuit to actually a movie, pushing a projection. We did over 200 uh, runs a day out of our distribution center. In other words, movie in class, over 200 a day, so that kind of thing. It was a real operation. I worked for, in other words, they had had about 30 student assistants per shift mm -hmm. just working in the distribution center with two staff members supervising them, that kind of thing. So. So anyway, I worked as a student assistant for 15 hours a week during my whole time. When I graduated, they offered me a staff job, good pay, good pay, 325 an hour. That's what UPS driver started at then, which is the equivalent of 15 an hour. Now, so you that was starting. So you went to work there? Yeah, I worked to work there for uh, at, in 70 until uh, late 71, and they fired me. Absenteeism, taking quite a Really? Like I said, I ran that girl off. You know why? Is that about the time you and her split? Yeah. No, okay. Within four months after we were divorced, I ran her off. I decided, here we got a beautiful girl, made even at that time 25-30% more money than I did even on my good paying staff job. Mm -hmm. In other words, she made the equivalent of $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, good grief. Right? Perfect house, squeaky clean, you could eat off the damn floor, meals ready, work to boot, gorgeous girl, and really only, to do, only wanted to do what I wanted to do. And if I didn't want to do anything, she, you know, she wouldn't like it, but she'd do it. If I wanted to sit around and smoke pot or something, you know, she didn't do any drugs, didn't drink. I was a pothead, of course, by then. And everybody, we'd smoke, we'd smoke on campus. It, uh, the staff would, would go into the... Uh, Air conditioning room was a room uh, bigger than this with an air conditioning unit taking up most of it and take some student assistance there and we'd go in there and smoke. We had the film society where we showed avant-garde films every Thursday night, Jean-Luc uh, uh, Godard films and uh, Ingmar Bergman films and that kind of thing. And every the whole auditorium would be lighting up. And finally, the cops got wind of it and came in and busted 27 people. That was the end of the film society. But that was, that was it back then. You know, drugs back then were uh, had not been demonized. Right. They were right. demonized very effectively under Reagan. Right. And he finally got that Omnibus Federal Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986 in which 
gave draconian penalties for, for, for dr drugs. Uh, that was in 86. So he ended up with a Macon housewife importing a kilo of coke with two other people, and one of them had a firearm in their house when they were arrested. They had to add that up. The Macon housewife got 30 years no parole and is serving it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's your demonization of drugs right there. Well, you, you, you say you uh, got fired from that job for absenteeism because you were taking quite a bit. Yeah, and, about and, the same and, time and it's our obituaries. Uh, within uh, three months, that was four, five, maybe five months after we, our divorce was married. So how many years total were you married to her? From uh, 68, summer of 68 to summer of 71. Summer of 71, so three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you break it off with her? Or did I ran her off. Oh, that's you know why I ran her off? You know, I'm telling you all these qualities she had. Well, remember now, I'm in, this is a cultural revolution. It's really hitting home. By 1970, everyone was in effect doing the 60s. <laughs> you know what I'm caught up to? Really? Yeah, yeah, you know, the really hip people in California were doing the 60s in the early 60s. They were taking acid while it was still legal, you know, in 63, 2, 1, you know. Mm -hmm. And so for the, they were really doing the 60s, the diggers, the free food distribution, the real hippies. And by 1970, now, you know, the masses, including me, were doing the 60s. So I was doing the 60s in the 70s. Well, the so, army took away from that too. I oh yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I did a flip from being gung ho to being, uh, you know, a, okay. a liberal, uh, you know, uh, down to the establishment. But anyway, we had the Cultural Revolution going on, and uh, they, they, I was in college, and I, even though I wasn't on the teaching staff, it was in a sense the same status almost as being on. You were staff. You had to both worlds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Air conditioning wasn't a blue collar job, nothing else. It's white shirt and tie and, and running a learning center or running a distribution center or this and that, supervising 30 student assistants, that kind of thing. Air conditioned, intellectual, that kind of academic atmosphere, right? Yeah. And my gripe against her was that she was just empty headed and didn't have a thought in the world and she was not sophisticated enough and not intellectual enough. You talk about stupid. Women today have too many thoughts. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you could find a woman that's just simple and plain and whatever you want, honey, and here's your food, and I got the house clean, good and I'm good-looking to boot, and I make more money than you, well, my God, 